Hello everyone, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I am reading the myth, um, the legend, the, the cultural sensation that is fourth wing. Somehow, you haven't been able to get a copy of this anywhere for ages. Like they can't print it fast enough. Everyone's reading it on TikTok. And my library somehow managed to get a first edition with these beautiful sprayed edges that I'm scared of ruining while I'm reading. So I thought I'd read it in a little vlog. I am actually already about that far into it. I'm on page 133. And I have lots of thoughts. I've been making notes because I kept meaning to start this as a vlog, but I kept forgetting to film. So it starts with this girl named Violet. She's our main character, and she's the daughter of a general called General Sorengill, who runs the whole army for this country. And they live in this place where there's, it's basically a big school for the education of the youth. And Violet is about to complete this trial to enter the school for dragon riders and she's actually wanted to be a scribe her whole life that's what she was kind of raised to do and she loves it but her father who was a scribe passed and over the past six months her mother has decided to force her to be a dragon rider just like she was and her sister is and her brother was before her brother passed so the dragon riding school is brutal like people just die all the time very like a lot of people die before they make it to being able to kind of graduate. Even once you do graduate, you might just die in battle because these two different countries are constantly at war. So we have, you can't really see some of it, but we have Nevere, which is where we are, and then Peromiel, Peromiel, and those two are always at war with each other. So there are several different wings, which are basically squadrons i don't know if that's a word but yeah so she is in fourth wing for the training and it's like different groups there's a squad and then a section and then a wing i believe so yeah she starts her training there's this love triangle thing that you know is going to be happening uh between an enemies enemies to lovers kind of thing which i know for sure i mean i feel like we all just know that enemies to lovers is gonna be who she ends up with. Sorry if that's a spoiler, but I'd be surprised if that wasn't how it ended up. Again, I'm not done with it. And then friends to lovers, which I actually like more than enemies to lovers, but yeah, the her friend is named Dane, and then the enemy is named Zayden. And basically the reason why they're enemies is that when General Sorengale, her mother, kind of squashed this uprising i guess there was this war anyway and a lot of the people on the side of peromial were executed and violet's mother is the one that like ordered those executions and now their children have to be conscripted as riders so they'll probably die as punishment so it's like generational trauma and zayden's father was killed by her mother so it's more beef with their parents than with them but as a result a lot of the people at the school want to kill violet a lot of the rebel kids because her mother impacted their family and the thing about violet is that she's got chronic issues so she's got very brittle joints and it makes her she's kind of like physically weak and she gets injured super easily so this very like physical school that she's at she has to do like physical trials sometimes those are extra hard for her because she has chronic pain now as someone who has chronic pain myself this is refreshing to read about my chronic pain is different i have chronic migraines and i have a virus that makes it so that i can't basically exercise <laughs> otherwise i will get sick but it's refreshing to read about a main character with chronic pain and there was one quote that i wanted to share with you guys already violet is standing in this big group of people and a dragon is like staring her down and it's like this kind of their opportunity to leave and they'll basically die if they leave but if they're worried that things are going to be too hard and violet says 
I will not run. I won't be I wouldn't be standing here if I quit every time something seemed impossible to overcome. I will not die today. And that was really good, especially the part about I wouldn't be standing here if I quit every time something seemed impossible. Like sometimes just daily tasks feel impossible for me. Sometimes it feels impossible that I could even like get up and go to work. I've just been at work. Um, and it actually felt impossible today because my arms were hurting so much and I got three migraines and like people with chronic pain suffer in such a specific way where you just have to keep pushing and I, I'm really enjoying hearing that perspective. Another thing about this book which surprised me because it's so big on TikTok and stuff and I know romanticy is super big right now and I've only read one other thing that I guess would qualify which was The Serpent and the Wings of Night which was actually I really enjoyed but I think I like that this is seeming more fantasy so far but it's brutal. It's brutal. It's like Hunger Games level brutal where there will be like a side character that isn't fully flesh fleshed out but you kind of like and then boom they're killed. Like at the end of the first chapter someone dies. So that actually, not that it's like a pro of the book but kind of it is because it makes the stakes actually feel high and it makes it seem like you're sort of like how is she gonna get through this like all of her loved ones are basically going to her and being like except for her mom because her mom's just like you have to do it and basically being like like we'd understand if you wanted to quit and go to the scribes even though that would mean your mom would either put you back or she like they could they kind of think like oh yeah if we just like move you over to the scribes your mom's gonna have no choice but like her mom would literally just move her back but they're sort of like we understand if you don't feel like you're up to it and she's like no i can do it but it's such a brutal thing like even people that are completely healthy can't do it but it's almost like her chronic pain is kind of a plus because it makes her so mentally strong that she is able to withstand a lot more a lot more physical pain and a lot more mental kind of doubt than most people one con i have so far is there was a massive info dump in chapter two and then again in this other chapter i just read because it, it just felt okay it felt really obvious so violet basically whenever she's stressed she starts just spewing facts about the world like okay part of this it's it's explained that it's because she's a scribe and like they learn all this stuff about the way the world works and it calms her down However, it comes across so info dump. Like when it's just paragraphs and paragraphs of stuff, like in the second chapter telling you about this world as a way she's supposed to be coping, it seems unrealistic to me. Maybe she would do it in her head, but she's saying these things out loud. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I don't know about it, but that really annoyed me to be honest, because I just hate info dumping. Like good world building is key and i feel like the world building could be better here another major not major but this was super annoying to me is this i'm gonna read it i'm gonna read it for you so to set the scene right violet is friends with this guy dane he's like the friends to lovers thing and they haven't seen each other in a year because he has been like in this school that you're not allowed to leave he's been a writer and so they're seeing each other for the first time and from Violet's perspective she's always had a crush on him but she's never made a move. Now this is how they're talking after five minutes of seeing each other. Just for a little bit of context she is up by his room where she's not supposed to be because she's a first year and he's a second year. So he says this is the second year floor he explains quietly which means I'm not supposed to be up here obviously. I tuck in a little bit closer. Don't worry, if someone sees us, I'll just say I was overcome with lust at first sight and couldn't wait another second to get you out of your pants. Ever the smartass, he says. A wry smile tugs at his lips as we start down the hall. I can throw in a few, oh, Dane, cries once you're, we're in your room just for believability, I offer and actually mean it. Like, explain to me how you've always been in the friend zone. He's your best friend. And this is what you're saying to him five minutes after you see him? Like, I also just, that style of flirting really cringes me out and it's very popular with the TikTok girlies. Um, and maybe it's just not my thing, but I'm also like, 
What? You've been friend zoned for ages. You've just seen your best friend for the first time in a year and you're talking about getting in his pants. Like, surely you have other things to catch up on. I don't know why that annoyed me so much, but it did. But I will keep you guys updated as I'm reading this. And yeah, like I said, I'll let you know pros and cons at the end. Currently, I'm feeling like I am actually liking it a lot more than I thought I would because I've been hearing lots of mixed things about it. But we'll see. It's kind of chunky. It's kind of long. So I'll let you know. Hello again, it is the next day and I am now almost halfway into fourth wing. I have some more thoughts. Most of them are actually good. I am liking this a lot more than I thought I would. I'm not like, I can tell it's not going to be a five star read for me, but it is good. Also, sorry if there's background noise. My life has been crazy the past two days. Our house flooded and now we have to move out temporarily and the only place I can film right now is my backyard. So I'm doing that. But let's get into my thoughts. So one thing is the reason why so many people are after her is because letting weak things and people live is actually against the writer's whole belief system. They think that any weakness is gonna bring everyone down. And so they should make sure that the weak people are rooted out. So that's part of why her life is always in danger. And we've finally gotten to the part with the threshing which is when dragons choose their riders so i'm gonna go into spoilers because i think it's fun at first there's this whole there's this whole switcheroo thing that happens like twice so at first you think she's gonna get chosen by this small feather tail golden dragon which it said that feather tail dragons don't like fighting so they're not really suitable for bonding and i've been having to make notes about the dragons and stuff like there's lots of characters lots of dragons and I've been having to make notes to keep up with everything. But at first you think that she's gonna get chosen by that one because she saves its life. But then this big boss black dragon comes in and his name is Tarn. Tarn? Tarn? I'm gonna say Tarn because that's how I read it in my head. He chooses her and he hasn't, he wasn't even supposed to be one of the dragons bonding. Like he's so powerful and his last rider died and he hasn't been able to recover but he pulled himself out of retirement for Violet. There's another twist that happens though. When she gets down to the field, it turns out the golden dragon has also chosen her. So she gets two dragons and everyone's like, what, that's not allowed. But the dragons sort of make the rules in this situation. So I guess it is allowed. And now she has both. That's kind of badass. I love, I love Violet. Maybe not any specific characteristics about her, but the fact that people underestimate her. Like, everyone loves to root for an underdog. So I'm really, I was like, go, go. But it's really sad because in this moment where Violet should be really happy, her mother does not give her even the time of day. Like, I get that she has to be professional, but she's not even, like, she even doubts that Tarn has actually chosen her daughter. I'm gonna read you a part. So you have to go up, basically, and there's this roll call thing where you have to say your name and the name of the dragon you're bonded to. But the dragon you're bonded to will only tell them, tell you their name if you're bonded. So her mom is like, don't say the dragon's name to all the other officers. She's like, make sure my, like Violet says it first because she could be lying basically. And this is what Violet's thinking. So she says, mom forced me into the rider's qu quadrant. She didn't care if I lived or died as I crossed the parapet. The only thing she cares about now is how my flaws might mar her sterling reputation or how my bonding might further her own agenda. And now she's staring at my dragon without even bothering to look down and see if I'm all right. F her. It's everything I expected and yet still so disappointing. It's just so sad. Her mom is really showing no, no feelings, no empathy toward her daughter. But I will say for her mom, at least she's not like Dane who I'll get to in a minute, but he's been kind of patronizing her and being like, you really need to quit, like, whatever. I, I mean, he's trying to save her life, but at the same time, it's like, just let her, like, she's been doing well, and he doesn't even, like, congratulate her on those things. He's just like, you can't do this anymore. And at least her mom isn't doing that. But I don't know if that's really just to protect her own image, but that sucks. So Dane, Violet's getting annoyed that he's always telling her what to do. I mean, he is her squad leader, but he's being super bossy. And honestly, he's getting to me too. And he's being super patronizing and I'm starting to see it. But I feel like this had to happen so that we could be like, oh my God, yay, Zayden. Because it turns out <laughs> that Zayden's dragon and the big black dragon Tarn are 
bonded mates for life and apparently when dragons bond for life they can't be too physically far away from each other <laughs> because their health will start to decrease which seems a little convenient to me but now we have this whole forks force proximity thing which is it's fine you know i won't complain but i am complaining a little bit because it's a little bit convenient i'm just such a skeptic when it comes to romance stuff like this is why i don't really read romance that much and also i hate when characters pretend not to like each other just because they're not supposed to like each other like dane i mean zayden has like saved her life a couple times now and she's still like oh but i'm i hate him because he's the reason my brother died but he's not like his dad is I don't know, it's just, clearly you can put that aside if he's not gonna kill you and now finally it's sunken that he's not gonna kill her because it would ruin like her dragon's emotional, his dragon's emotional state because it would ruin her dragon's emotional state. I, anyway, but now everyone is trying to kill Violet again still because everyone, like the people that didn't bond with dragons want to kill the people that did and bond with theirs. And since Tarn is like obviously the best one, they want to kill Violet so they can get Tarn. So I was like, will she ever not be in danger? Apparently not. Apparently everyone's always trying to kill her. But I kind of, I like Violet. I think she's strong. She's resilient. She hasn't done much in the way of like feeling fully formed. I will say like, I like her as a character, but mostly because of what she stands for um, and the chronic pain representation. So we'll see, but I am enjoying it a lot more than I thought that I would. And I'll let you guys know when I've read more. Hello, it is the next day and I am now halfway through fourth wing. I'm starting to dislike it more. I think I'm getting a lot more annoyed with the lack, the absolute lack of world building. There's none, there's none. Yeah, I thought I could ignore how bad the world building is, but I really can't. There's something that happens, one specific thing. Violet goes to, she's on like library duty. So she gets to go and get things for people from the library, which she loves because she wanted to be a scribe, whatever. She runs into her friend there and for no reason, they start speaking in sign language, but I don't know if it's our sign language. They just say, start saying, she starts saying that she signs to this girl. And it's like, okay, well, at first I thought, well, maybe Jasenia is mute or deaf. No, she can speak. And then they start speaking randomly. And so not only is the signing thing never explained why they do it, what it is, or whatever. Maybe they want to be quiet because it's the library. You don't know. We can only guess. <laughs> and um, not only that, but there's just nothing. There's nothing that we know about the scribes and apparently they're not supposed to show emotion that's only mentioned like briefly and there's no real explanation i think it's like there's a little bit of an explanation like something like emotions cloud our judgment or something like that i don't know but it was the most confusing scene i think i've ever read because it was just boom they're speaking in sign language now they're not why we don't know we don't know. And then at one point she's like struggling to figure out how to sign something. So she just figures out a different way to sign it instead of saying anything out loud. Violet, babe, what do you do? What? Why is there no explanation? It's like this scene was just dropped out of midair and I don't know if it has anything to do anymore with the story. It seemed very inconsequential. It was like an out of body experience. There's no way this book will be over four stars for me. Four is hopeful. But there's a, like, I don't get it. This is so clearly flawed. Like, what was that scene? It, anyway, I, I digress. It's fine. We're fine. Uh, we're not, we're not fine. That's not fine. Why do I cry every time I get annoyed at something? <laughs> no, but to be honest, life currently is an absolute shit show. Part of my language, mom and dad. It just is. Uh, this is so unrelated, but our house flooded. We're gonna have to move out temporarily. I think I said that yesterday, but it's just been like I hit the car two days in a row. It's fine, it still drives, but I just, things, it's like Annie and that very terrible, no good, very bad day, you know? Or really our whole family. It's just everything's a shambles. Um, and this book is pissing me off. It's pissing me off. Another thing is why exactly is she so pale? We're told that because of her illness, she has really pale skin, pale 
eyes, I think, and her hair is sort of ombre, so it's like brown and then it fades to a silver. Why? Why? There's no explanation for that. It, it's just like I'm remembering things that like, why Why are things the way that they are and why, why did no one tell us why? <sighs> Last subject that I have that is annoying as well is Dane. What a little brat. He is so focused on following the rules. He doesn't, it's like, he does he, I can't even talk about it. It makes me so mad. I don't support this man. I don't support him. He likes the rules so much. He doesn't even have any empathy for Violet. When anything happens, he thinks could be outside of the rules. And he has no faith in her. I'm gonna read you a part. All right, so also he doesn't believe in questioning authority. He literally says here, she's a wing leader Vi. I'm not about to question her integrity. He is so NPC. He's giving Stormtrooper. <laughs> he is. Like, no thoughts. No thoughts in this man's head other than I have rules. I'm programmed this way. So she gets mad at him for something because the dragon, she can't really like hold on to the dragon when she's trying to ride it. So she keeps flying off. Her dragon Tarn could like do these invisible bond things where he can keep her on. But she's like, no, I don't want you to use your enemy, your energy on me. What if we're in a battle and it's like an expense of your energy? So she keeps flying off and then he'll catch her. And Dane's like mad about this because he's like, I want you to be safe, blah, blah, blah. So she goes, this place cuts away the bullshit and the niceties, revealing whoever you are at your core. I repeat his words from the summer. Isn't that what you said to me? Is this who you really are at your core? Someone so enamored with rules that he doesn't know whether to bend or break them for someone he cares about? When to bend or break them for someone he cares about? Someone so focused on the least I'm capable of doing, he can't believe I can do so much more? The warmth drains from his brown eyes. Let's get one thing straight, Dane. I take a step closer, but the distance between us only widens. Ooh, drama. The reason we'll never be anything more than friends isn't because of your rules. It's because you have no faith in me. Even now, when, I'm survived, when I've survived against all odds and bonded not just one but dragon, but two, you still think I won't make it. So forgive me, but you're about to be some of the bullshit that this place cuts away from me. Like, she went off and I can't blame her. Dane is being a pain in everyone's butt. I'm trying so hard not to cuss. And yeah, that's what I have to say about Dane. I agree, I, I second that. How dare he think she can't do anything? Like, I get it, I get it. And she even says herself, like, he's my best friend. Like, if I was him, I'd probably be reacting in a similar way. But the fact that his attention to the rules supersede his care for her, look at me using big, big words, <laughs> um, is ridiculous. And so I don't support Dane. Don't know if I support Zayden, because he's so, he's like one of those guys that the girlies love, where he's like, don't speak to her or I will kill you. Like that vibe, which I kind of like, but also I love a romance. Mm. I want to like romances. I almost think that this would be such a strong story if he wasn't stepping in to protect her and if she could just do the protecting. We don't know. It could still be that kind of vibe, like with Veronica and Stoker in um, the Veronica Speedwell series, like where he sort of just steps back and lets her like do her thing. I think that's what she needs because she needs someone that's gonna let her shine and help her when she needs it. So far, I'm not getting that vibe. We'll see. Anyway. This book has started to piss me off. And we still gotta have to go. So I will let you know when I've read more, probably tomorrow or tonight. Goodbye. All right, hello. I have finished Fourth Wing. I'm not doing great. It's, this was hard to read. I, it was hard to read. I never really wanted to pick it up when I was reading it. I kept reading to see if somehow it would get better but it did not get better. Disclaimer, okay, I'm not the typical reader for this book and I'm not like the main audience, I guess, because I don't typically read romantic new adult fiction. And I'm also an English literature student, so I have a bit of a pretentious taste in books sometimes. I find it really hard just to read something I don't think is great 
writing and being able to enjoy it. I have a lot to cover, so let's just, let's just start. So first of all, characters. I group this up into little sections, but for the characters, first of all, why are we always talking about people's hair? Like, is there anything else we need to know about these characters other than their hair? Apparently, Becca Yaros does not think so. We're constantly mentioning, like, this girl has pink hair, Imogen, and it's her defining trait. And it's just, it's fine. I don't mind. I love hair. I like my hair. I like other people's hair. But, like, when that's the only thing we're mentioning, it's a bit weird. Like, tell us something else. I don't know what a whole person looks like just because I know what their hair looks like. That's like so nitpicky, I know, but it bothered me. Also, the character work in this book is non-existent. Our characters don't change at all throughout the whole book. No one is developing, no one's growing, no one's really learning new things about themselves. I guess you could say Violet finds more strength in herself, but really she always has seemed to be quite determined in that sense, so I don't know. Also, sorry if I'm squinting. It's very bright outside. Also, a lot of characters are brought in that you just know instantly are gonna be killed. This is very convenient, seemingly so that our, none of the main characters have to die. There'll be things where they're just brought in, like there's this girl, Soleil, that's brought in. Ooh, Soleil. And you just, you just know, okay? You know she's gonna die. Cause she's mentioned super last minute, all of a sudden there's a rock falling towards Violet and boom, Soleil has like rock powers, I guess? that are never explained and so it's like okay she can just move the rock out of the way and save violet's life and then she dies and it's like okay that all happened in maybe two chapters if that maybe just one you just know she's gonna die and it seems a bit too convenient to me that a lot more of our main characters aren't dying there's also no actual sense that violet and dane are best friends like they're always talking about how oh my god you're my best friend i grew up with you i've always like i never spent a day apart from you until you went away to this school and where is that? I'm not getting any of that sense. I, I don't know. It's very confusing to me. There's just no like witty banter between them. There's no sort of friendship. There's no sign that Violet cares about him at all. So that bothered me. There's a lot of telling and not showing. Like why are we just supposed to believe that they're best friends if we can't see it? Similarly, Violet and Rhiannon meet and then instantly they become best friends. It's like when you're in kindergarten Oh my god, like in High School Musical, when she, Vanessa Hudgens is like, oh, it's like when you're in kindergarten, and you just run up to someone on the playground and you make best friends, that's it, right there. That is Violet and Rhiannon. And I'm not mad about Rhiannon, like she's cool. I just kind of thought she was gonna turn on Violet because we knew nothing about her. We still don't really know anything about her except that she's an aunt, so that's cool, I guess. I do like Liam and the dragons. If you know, you know. Liam, king okay but even he none of the side characters really get that much character development or exploration like he is the most i'd say out of the side characters and other than that it's all about violet and zayden and even their characters aren't really developed that well so moving on to the writing it's not the worst writing i've ever read okay but it's also not gonna win any awards i really don't like this whole and again, this might be because I don't usually read this kind of genre, but I don't like the whole quippy one-liner romantic -y dialogue. If there's one thing about our girl Violet, it's that she loves a little one-liner. Quippy, quippy little sentence. Just a little bit sassy would be ideal. Maybe it's just personal preference, but I found the dialogue pretty cringe. I have an example. Violet says to Zayden, Dragon relationships are absolutely incomprehensible. And then he goes, yeah, you should try a human one sometimes, just as vicious, but less fire. Like, who says that in real life? Sometimes they, these characters have me scratching my head. I mean, is that how anyone speaks? Maybe I'm weird. I don't know. And again, maybe you don't mind this. I was gonna do a whole should you read fourth wing thing with like, a whiteboard and all these pros and cons but i can only think of cons unless you don't care about these cons and you're just in it for a fun time which unfortunately i can't be because my degree has ruined media for me but in a great way because i love my my degree <laughs> but i can't just i can't just let that slide i also don't know how i feel about the contemporary language that's always used <laughs> sorry my dog just coughed she says for the win several times and 
I just, I don't know. It, everything's seeming very current. I know some people said, some like videos I've watched, some people said that they liked that because it made it feel easy to understand and stuff. But I just felt like a little more imagination would be cool. A little bit like something different. Don't know. Also, in terms of dialogue, the dirty talk during the spicy scenes is not, it's not, that's not it for me. Maybe it is for you. I don't even want to really get into the spicy scenes, but I didn't find them good or scintillating or anything. They didn't make me feel those feelings that I would want to feel. That's all I'm gonna say about them. And also, Zayden will say things to her like, like this, okay? He says, fuck, that stubborn, feisty look always makes me want to kiss you. Which is just so romantic -y, it's not even funny. Like, this is, this book, if you've read any other book in the romanticy genre, you have read Fourth Wing. It is so trope, so trope, <laughs> so tropey. It is just so stereotypical. And you know what? I think that's what some people like about it, is that it feels sort of nostalgic. People compare it to The Hunger Games, which I can kind of see. People compare it to Divergent all sorts of different things. I don't know. I think that those things do it better than Fourth Wing. I don't love comparing it. Sorry about that. Also, there are some times when the writing is just so bad that it's confusing. So, okay, Violet is about to duel this guy that is like her arch nemesis, sort of. And this person, I guess, is reading a list of who's fighting who, but it doesn't say who that person is. So it, it just says, at least Zayden isn't here, which means Liam kept his word. Matt 17, Jack Barlow from First Wing versus his eyebrows rise, who's? We don't know. And he takes a deep breath. Who does? Violet Sorengale. It's like the rest of the dialogue. It's just make it make sense. The plot doesn't make sense. The writing doesn't make sense. Everything in this book makes no sense. And you know what else doesn't make sense is how much people love this book. I said what I said. Moving on to the plot slash world building element. You know this is gonna be the longest section because I have so much to say. Oh my god. The world building is so bad that it makes the book confusing. It's not bad in a way where you can sort of be like, oh well maybe I'll just ignore it because everything still makes sense. Like it doesn't really matter. I'm reading it for the romance. For the romance. Like it's not like that. It's actually so bad that you can't understand what's going on. We got another scribe scene. Enough said about that. I'm not gonna talk about it. Nothing else got explained. It's also, this book is so confusing that even over halfway through, you're not sure how the book, how the world works. Also, I was watching Reg Reagan's video from Peru's project. She said the college feels like it exists in a world of its own and like a bubble and we know nothing about the outside world. And I would agree. And spoiler alert, when we do actually go outside of the college, it still makes no sense and it doesn't really feel like there's anything there. It doesn't. Like, there's supposed to be this town and it's like, what town? What does it look like? Who are these people? Why are there people outside the college? Crazy. I don't know. Also, so when the dragons bond to a writer, the writer gets some of the dragon's power and it manifests in this thing called the signet, which is like your specific special power. But first, apparently, there's this thing called channeling, and I, it's never explained what the difference between that is. Yaris is making us work a lot to guess at sort of what these things are. Like, we can guess that channeling is when you first start to feel the dragon's power, and you can do apparently other little magical tasks, like unlock doors and stuff, with your mind. It's, again, that's not really explained and then eventually you get a signet. So there was a bit of confusion for me between the signet and the channeling. I don't know if that's just me, but I found it confusing. Another thing is like, she'll just throw in random elements and not talk about them. Like apparently at one point, Zayden is smoking this thing called churum. We don't know what that is. There's no glossary of terms in the back. It's just like, yeah, he smokes it to calm himself down. We can infer that it's either like weed or nicotine, but we don't know. We don't know, it's called churum. I don't know. And it's only mentioned at one time. Like, 
Stop mentioning things if you're not gonna tell us what they are. Also, some other things don't make sense. Like as soon as Violet is bonded with her dragon, she knows how to communicate with him telepathically, but then her dragon is, you know, sleeping with Zayden's dragon. And so now the four of them are like linked. Well, technically five because Violet's bonded to two dragons. So it's the three dragons and her and Zayden can all communicate telepathically, but she doesn't figure out she can communicate with telepathically with Zayden until later. And then when she does, she can't figure out how to respond to him, even though she had no trouble when it came to the dragons. How does that make sense? And why? Why is that? It doesn't, again, not explain. Also, <sighs> Zayden gets Violet a saddle for her dragon, which is sweet, you know, that's nice because her butt gets sore and her joints are sore from just sitting on his hard back. But apparently Zeta makes it so that Tarn, her dragon, can get in and out of this thing by himself. And when asked how, actually no one asks how he does it, he's just sort of like, yeah, I told Zeta I'd have to be able to get it on and off by myself. So how I'm trying to envision it. Like maybe he walks into this thing that somehow on, like explain something, explain something about this. Explain, please, please. Rebecca Garz, this book was so long and it felt to me, each page felt so long, but it needed to be longer to explain anything in here. Or maybe it didn't, maybe it could have just been concise and less long spicy scenes because I hated those. I hated them. Also, this is an obvious point, but it doesn't make sense that there's a big thing about how the army really needs more people and they're understaffed, the infantry as they're called. But a bunch of people go into this riding school just to die and the commanders are okay with them dying, even though like they're needed. That doesn't make sense. I'm just tired so i'm not going to talk about that much more crazy a big thing that annoys me and does not make me very happy with miss yaros is how sort of fetishized violet is for being so tiny and white um that's weird that's weird also she reads really young that's weird okay she's supposed to be like 20. zayden's supposed to be 23. he reads like he's 23. violet maybe 16. that's weird that's weird uh, okay also Zayden is described as having tawny skin and he seems to be sort of racially ambiguous when asked in an interview Rebecca Yars said that he is a person of color then why are you making it so ambiguous in your book why not just say that why not have that be a part of his character definitively it seems like a whole have your cake and eat it too. You know, people can envision him as being white or any other race that they want really, which s seems weird. Just have him be a person of color and state it. Why so, why the mystery? That's weird, Rebecca, that's weird. There's also these really weird and annoying time jumps in which apparently nothing happens. A whole year basically passes in this book or like nine months and we're just supposed to think, okay, cool. Nothing's changed. It doesn't feel like anything's changed in the time jumps. So why are they there? Just, I, I, obviously just to get to the end of the year. I, this book is a mess. It's a mess. It's messy and it's a mess and it doesn't make sense. Finally, the romance. So I didn't buy it. I bought that they were attracted to each other, okay? But the book was asking me to buy that they were in love with each other in love with each other and where was the development where was the angst the only angst was like he wanted to kill me and now he doesn't and i still felt like it was too soon when they kissed for the first time violet is so like zayden i love you i'm in love with you i get it violet like you think he's hot okay there's nothing wrong with that you're in lust you're not in love babe you're not in love, but apparently they're both in love. And I'm supposed to believe it. 
and I don't believe it and I don't buy it and there's also nothing special about either of them except for maybe Violet's chronic pain which at first I thought was pretty good representation now I don't think so because it's barely mentioned toward the end of the book and I don't understand how she's gotten so far genuinely realistically without other forms of accommodations in addition to the ones she has <sighs> yeah Violet and Zayden they're just they're every couple ever in romanticy and if you want a book that's like this but reads better and with vampires instead of dragons read serpent in the wings at night it was so good i was just comparing this to that the whole time because that's the only other romanticy i've read and that was so enjoyable and so fun and even i was able to be like okay well the writing wasn't great but i loved the story and the characters this had none of that and i guarantee you you'll have a better time reading that book also a side note just one last thing the sex that they have causes massive destruction and Violet has the power of lightning bolt and there's like a lightning storm and no one comes up to her and is like hey why did you do that I think someone mentions like oh in your sleep you must be you know but no one she doesn't get in trouble for wrecking school property like nothing like that it's every little thing about this book is annoying to me every little thing about it it's a two star maybe one star because I, I don't think I would be this annoyed if it wasn't so hyped up like everyone and their brother is like oh my god the best book ever this is crazy but really this one this one it doesn't stand out at all so that was my review of fourth wing thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed I mean I wish I had positive things to say about this book so sorry if it was a bit of a downer if you've gotten this far in the video comment a little dragon emoji if they have one if not comment snake emojis because I feel like I've been snaked. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. Make sure you click on the notification bell to be notified every time that I upload and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.